The universe is the mysterious creation of a vast intelligence. The origin of the world and life is beyond human understanding. The Vedas describe how consciousness is transformed into energy and matter. This process of creation and becoming is going on today, right now. This is not a theory or a religious doctrine. With these keys of understanding, you can see it for yourself. Namaste. So last time we talked about the 36 tattvas, and today we're going to talk about how the sound vibration, shabda, evolves from those tattvas. Now remember, last time we showed how Parashiva, who is nothing but Brahman, emanates the first five tattvas. Shiva tattva, the power of consciousness. Shakti tattva, the power of bliss. Sadashiva tattva, the power of will. Ishwara tattva, the power of knowledge. And Shuddhavidya tattva, the power of action. Now these five have their associated shaktis. Shiva tattva has the chit shakti. Shakti tattva has the ananda shakti. Sadashiva tattva has the itcha shakti. Ishwara tattva has the jnana shakti. And Shuddhavidya tattva has the kriya shakti. And all of these are part of the non-dual creation. That is, internally, although they have different external manifestations, there is no difference. There is no differentiation. They are one being. Uh, this is why Shiva has five faces. There's also a form of Shakti like that. So whether we're talking about the uh, Nirguna Brahman or Saguna Brahman, internally they are one, although they may have various external manifestations. So in that stage, there is no need for sound vibration. There's no need for symbols or language or communication, because who are you going to talk to? <laughs> There's only one self with a capital S. But then in the next stage, we showed how Shiva gives rise to these five tattvas. Right? And each of these tattvas has an associated type of shabda or sound vibration. For the Shiva tattva, it's called para shabda, which means supreme. For Shakti tattva, it's called pashyanti shabda. Pashyanti means a subtle sound vibration, not yet manifest. Sadashiva tattva has the Madhyama Shabda, which is a little less subtle, but still not manifest. And finally, Ishwara Tattva has the Vaikari Shabda, the subtle part of Vaikari Shabda, and Shuddhavidya Tattva has the gross part of Vaikari Shabda. So the gross part of Vaikari Shabda is the Vedas the Upanishads, the Vedanta, the Tantras, all the Vedic literatures are in the Shuddha Vidya. Huh? Shuddha means pure, but Vidya means limited knowledge. Limited by what? Name and form. Our old friend, Nama Rupa. Because every symbol or every word symbolizes a certain form. You cannot have a word that symbolizes the formless, only in the abstract. Uh, in reality, they have form, even if it's only the negation of form. For example, shunyata means emptiness or nothingness. But what is the definition of it? The absence of form, you see. 
There has to be something for there to be nothing. So the something is implied in the definition because it means the absence of that something, the absence of everything. <laughs> so the assumptions or the implications of the definition make the word limited, even though it refers to something unlimited, like parashiva, for example, or brahman, for example. We know the word, but we don't know the thing that it refers to unless we become self-realized. That's an important distinction. So then what happens? <laughs> well, before we talked about parashiva, the first tattva, and parashakti, the second tattva. Now, what happens to them? How do they then emit the sound vibration that creates the creation? Well, the parashiva, as you recall, his sound vibration is called parashabda, or nada tattva. And the parashakti, her sound vibration is called pashyanti shabda, or bindu tattva. Now these tattvas are in addition to the 36 tattvas we went over before. The parashabda creates a bindu called sita, white in color. And the Pashanti Shabda creates a bindu called Shona, red in color. Then these two bindus combine to form the Mishra bindu. And the three of them together are called the Tree Bindu or Kamakala. Kamakala we have run into before. If you've been following, if you've been paying attention, Kamakala is the bija ing. And ing is the root of all mantras. It is the sound along with krong that fructifies the other mantras because it is the highest mantra. And from this ing, this tribindu, uh, this triangle, all other bindus, all other shabdas, all other manifestations take place. Let's look at the emanations or the uh, different transformations of these three bindus. Remember, the Sita bindu is white, Shona bindu is red, and Mishra bindu is mixed. So they are also known as bindu, nada, and bija. Prakasha, Vimarsha, and Prakasha Vimarsha. Prakasha means the visible light, the self effulgent Shiva. And Vimarsha means the uh, reflection or the particularization or individualization of that light. And the two of them combined are Prakasha Vimarsha. Then there's Icha Shakti, Jnana Shakti, and Kriya Shakti. Vama, Jeshta, and Raudri, the feminine forms associated with the three demigods, Brahma, Vishnu, and Rudra. And finally, there's moon, fire, and sun. There are many more. Huh? Because of Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, they're also associated with the three gunas, passion, or Raja, for Brahma, Sattva or goodness for Vishnu and Tamas or ignorance for Rudra because he's the destroyer. But then the moon and fire are called Kala and the sun is called Kama because he stimulates everyone to go out and search out their desires. So the two of them together, the Tribindu named Kama Kala or the bija ing. Now then, these three, all together in their various permutations, generate the matrikas, the vaikari shabda, the subtle sound, the uh, intention to speak and create. And the matrikas generate the vaikari, 
Shabda, the gross sound vibration, which consists of Varna, letters, Pada, words, and Vakya, sentences. So these are the actual Vedas. These are the scriptures. These are the words that guide the rest of the creation. Uh, that Look at it this way. Shiva and Shakti, literally, they sit down together and they sing the cosmos into manifestation. And this is why the Vedas are so deep and subtle, why there are so many hidden meanings. Uh, just like when two people are intimate, uh, they develop their own language, isn't it? They develop their own slang, hidden meanings that nobody else understands that come from shared experiences. So Shiva and Shakti have experiences together that nobody else shares because they are together before the creation of the universe and after the destruction, after the pralaya, the, even the maha pralaya at the end of the universe. And then they go into an unmanifested state together. Who knows what goes on? <laughs> you know, that's between them. That is their own private, intimate pastime. So we have no access to that. So their language that they evolved to talk with each other has many hidden meanings that nobody else can understand because we don't have the experience. We don't have access to that level of experience. Therefore, the Vedas are very deep, very subtle, and their meanings are hidden and confidential. The only way to understand the Vedas is through revelation. Uh, and, and this is called Avaroha Panta. It means the descending path. See, this is why sound vibration also evolves from subtle to gross, because it's coming down the descending path from the origin of the cosmos, Shiva and Shakti. And then it's reaching us in the form of symbolic language, the matrika. Uh, the matrika are the sounds that are symbolized by the letters and the words and sentences. And the meanings are derived from the meanings of the sounds, the matrika. Uh, this is why Sanskrit is so extremely subtle and also extremely powerful. And by chanting Sanskrit mantras, all kinds of effects are possible. And we're going to go into this very deeply in the uh, further episodes of this series, uh, The Mysteries of the Matrika. And before we do that, though, before we show how mantras come out of these syllables, we have to go into the syllables themselves. So the next episodes are going to discuss the Matrika, the 51 letters of the Sanskrit alphabet. <laughs> which you have to know, and you have to know their meanings in order to understand the words in the scriptures. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum.